Yes. Excuse me, Dr. Soper? Uh, you must be Ed Stevens. Yeah, please come in. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, hi. Uh, so, would you care for some coffee before we get started? Just like that, we're just gonna start? You know what, maybe, maybe this isn't such a good idea after all. You know, I, I, uh, I'm just gonna sit in that chair and talk about myself for now. I don't know if I can do that. I, mean, I don't know if I can put you through that. Ed, that's the whole point of seeing a therapist. I know, but it's so gosh darn self-indulgent. You know, I feel like Corey Feldman on Inside the Actor Studio. <laughs> Your friend, Dr. Burton, tells me you've been upset. Uh, depressed. Yeah, well, that's true. He thought maybe I could help you figure things out. I'd love to give it a try. Okay. <laughs> Good. Oh, now, how about that coffee? Say, you got any root beer? Like, why are you bending me up like this, man? Sorry. What do you mean, sorry? Do you think I made a silly putty? What you gonna do, smush me down on the funny pages and peel me off until I get haggard to horrible on my ass? I said I'm sorry, Eli. What are you so tense about? I'm not tense. Are you kidding me? You all knotted up like macrame, and you've been bitching at me since the moment you got here. So what's going on? I, I told you, ain't nothing going on. Everything is cool, man. You can tell me what's wrong. I'm gonna hit you where you can still feel it. Oh, it's like that now? Very much so. Nance. If you've got appointments this afternoon, cancel them. Why? What's up? You're a guidance counselor. I need guidance counseling. What's the matter, Molly? Are you feeling woodshop? <laughs> this is no joke. OK, sorry. Sit down. OK. Talk to me. <sighs> what is that? My guidance counselor pad. Put it away. As you wish. All right. Here goes. The other night at the town pool, I did something horrible. And the other night at the town pool, that's when everything went to hell. The other night at the town pool, I destroyed the best relationship I ever had. I'm gonna need some more root beer. So to make a long story short, after three years in Stucky Bill, I finally started dating one Carol Vesey. <laughs> three years? Yeah. Well, you certainly know how to close a deal. Forgive me, Ed. It was uncalled for. Anyway, the trouble started about a month ago, after Carol got this great job offer in New York City, and I couldn't bear the thought of leaving Stucky Bill and going back there, so we decided to try things long distance for a while. How'd that go? It was a challenge. Quite a challenge indeed. <laughs> I sure do punch each other a lot in Orange County. Oh, that's gotta be some kind of record. For what? We just spent 28 minutes without either one of us saying anything. Really? Yep, dead silence, even during the commercial. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you're on the phone for three straight hours. It's gonna be another record. Yeah, all right, I guess we should go. Okay, wait. Yeah. One more game of Cow Kitty. <laughs> All right, yeah, you go. Okay. Cow. Moo. Kitty. Meow. Cow. Moo. Kitty. Meow. Cow. Moo. Cow. Moo. Kitty. Meow. Cow. Meow. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> All right. Good night. I love you. I love you. So I told you about Jennifer Young, right? Jennifer Young? Yeah, the pie lady. Oh, yeah, the pie lady, the one you're in business with. So the other day we were sitting down going over our marketing strategy. Did you know we sell more pies? What? A radio jingle. And what kind of jingle do you have in mind? You know, it's funny you should ask me, Jennifer, because I've been giving this a lot of thought. And let me break this down to you logically. I'm listening. Whatever we do, it got to be gangster, because that's how we live. It can't be too gangster. We don't want to scale up the elderly Caucasian. See, that's our pie eating demographic. That's very wise. No, you know what we need? We need a, we need a rapping granny. You kidding, right? Now, come on. You know how funny it is when white people try to talk like black folk. Hey, Miss Harris, repeat after me. Off the heezy, 
for Sheezy. Sheezy Cheesy Magoo. <laughs> ah, now, come on now. Come on, you know that is state of the art comedy, right? That's priceless right there. Eli. Yes? I'm starting to think you might be a dumbass. And right that second, I looked at Jennifer, covered in flour, calling me dumbass, and I realized I was falling in love. I've been calling you a dumbass for months. Yeah, Larry, but I don't date black men. I don't get it, Molly. I was with you the whole night. What'd I miss? Okay, let me start from the beginning. My tale of woe begins one evening at Stucky Bowl. Hey, um, Shirley, do you have any gum? Indeed I do. Help yourself. Uh, wax lips? Enjoy. Do, do you have any regular gum? Why chew regular gum when you can chew a gum that is also a costume? The Zen of Shirley Pifka. <laughs> well, well, if it isn't Barbara Hershey and Angelina Jolie. Hi, Phil. Hey, you want a bowl game? No, thanks. Come on, I'll handicap myself. How? Size 15 shoes. Uh, no, you know, I, I, I've got to go home anyways. i got to be up at 6 a.m. little Tai Chi at sunrise? No, I'm doing an interview before school starts. For what? For hiring a new night janitor. That was my first mistake. I mean, of course, if I knew that he was going to... What are you doing? I'm listening. What, 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 what is that, your guidance counseling face? <laughs> what is, like, weird? <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> So after a couple of weeks of endless phone calls, it was finally time for my first visit to New York, so I got in on a Friday, and Carol invited me to come by the office. And even though we'd only been apart for just a little while, you know, seeing her made it seem that much longer. She just looked different. Uh, this is like the layout area, they design the whole magazine here, and oh, oh, artwork. Yes, and oh, this is the best part. <laughs> Ta-da! This is where I sit. Oh, cool. Do you want to see what I look like when I write? Yeah, do I ever. Mm. Huh. Oh, that's, that's impressive, that's very good. You know, you are very, that's, you look great. Thank you, so do you. Oh, really? Thanks. What's, what's with the, uh, cap? Oh, th this? It's a trucker cap. They sell them on the street. I just bought one. You know, I, why is it no good? It doesn't look. It's no good. No, it's okay. stupid. It's we did this silly trend watcher piece in the magazine about how trucker caps are. You know. What? They're out of fashion. What? I just. I haven't even seen one before today. I, I said it's. It's stupid. It's nothing. Oh. Oh, Stephen. Hey. 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 Come here. You gotta say hi to Ed. Oh, it's the boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's it going, bro? <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, well, thank you. Steven is a photographer, and yeah. he has really, really been helping me settle in. Yes. You, oh, great. Well, that's, that's kind of you, Steven. No problem. You got a fine young woman here, bro. Thanks, bro. All right. I got to hand these in. Mm -hmm. I'll see you guys later. Uh, oh, yeah, I... Trucker cap? I hardly knew you. Come on. Other things to show you. Carol fit in so well with her new magazine buddies, I just didn't. And every time I dared open my mouth, they looked at me like I was speaking Portuguese. Last night at the Soho Grand, I ran into Giovanni Rabisi. Oh my God, he was so funny in Lost in Translation. He cracked me up. Ed, have you seen it? No. Ele nunca vê estoque, vê. Uh-huh. Mas quando tinha 15 anos, eu conhecia o Chuck Norris. Now, wait to hear what happened next. Hold on. You really met Chuck Norris? That wasn't the point. Well, I, I know I'm just a fan. Walker, Texas Ranger, was, was a lovely piece of work. So later that evening, we went back to Carol's place. God, I've never felt so uncool all my life. Come on. The great loved you. Oh, how about that one guy who asked me if I bought Stucky Wolf for the Kitsch Factor? What the heck is that supposed to mean? Ugh, you're overreacting. Huh, what about that girl? The girl that goes on about Friendster. What the hell is a Friendster? Actually, it's this cool online thing. Well, you little can... buddy Steven who goes on and on and keeps dropping names left, right, and center. You know, next time, I'm going to pretend I know Gerard Depardieu. All right, enough. They're nice people. They were just having a little fun. Whatever. <sighs> Relax. 
they're just not used to wholesome Midwestern types like you. I mean, wholesome Midwestern types like us, right? Is there a problem? No, no problem. Everything's great. Everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Well, if there's nothing for us to talk about, get ready for bed. Cow, wait. Cow. You're supposed to moo. So the question is, does Jennifer think about me the way I think about her? In my experience, that's usually pretty obvious. Yeah, Larry, man, but when you're in a wheelchair, man, I mean, when you're in one of these things, man, people always give you that smiley wheelchair face, you know? Right. It'd be so much easier if I could just look at people and know what's going on inside their head. Jeremiah was a bullfrog, Donna, and was a good friend of mine, hey. Never understood a single word he said, but I helped him a drink his wine. 24 across, Dennis Rodman's ex-wife. Carmen Electron. Electra. Thank you, mind reading, Eli. Wanna know if I like you? You stop staring at me like an aardvark and make your move. Where the hell she get aardvark from? Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Hey, joy to you and me. So, did you make your move? Yes, I did. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, listen, it's around supper time. I was wondering if you'd like to go get something to eat. Oh, I was supposed to meet a friend tonight. Ah, it's all right. It's all right, no problem. No, let me just call and tell her I can't make it. Nicely done, Eli. Yeah, very smooth. Was anybody talking to you? No, so you might as well get on out of here because it's a private conversation. Thank you. Can't stand that dude, man. Which brings us to the next morning. So, how long have you been a custodian? Two years. And what'd you do prior to that? Investment banking. I was downsized when the market went south. Really? Oh. Nah. Just yanking your noodle. I was a dishwasher with chilies. Oh. oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for coming in, and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Next one, Eunice. Phil, what are you doing here? I want the job. You want to be the night janitor? No, I want to be the star of Becker, but I don't think Ted Danson's going anywhere anytime soon. You've already got a job. I know. I need another one. I've got to support my eBay habit. What's a guy like you buy on eBay? Mostly pants. Used pants. Huh. I can't hire you. Why not? Because you're irresponsible and extremely annoying. Yeah, but in a funny way, right? Yeah, I've never thought so. Oh, come on. Give me a chance here. I won't let you down. Not until it's too late. A week went by. It was Cal's turn to visit. Uh, after the way things had gone in New York, I was pretty nervous about it. <laughs> Listen, uh, friend, where, where do you think I should take Carol? I mean, I really want to show her a good time. Oh, hang on, check this out. Watch this. Really, Butch? Down. Down. Oh, you see that? That instantaneous response. Hey, come on, Lefty, <laughs> this is important. So, so is this. Two weeks ago, Willie Butch wouldn't listen to a word I said. Now it's like I'm Dr. Doolittle. I'm telling you, this guy we took him to really straighten him out. Well, that's great, Hulk. Really, really it is. But what about Carol? I don't know. I'm sure, uh... Should figure something out. There's no reason to feel down. <laughs> He's a furry little genius. You're a furry little genius. So I came up with this perfect plan for me and Carol. A little hike and then an early dinner at this cool little mountain lodge. It never happened. Why not? Well. Hello. Hey, Carol, you hey. Hey, man. You remember Steven? Yep, uh, yeah. I am doing a piece on New York versus Stuckyville, and he came along to take some pictures. Is that, right? is that right? This place is unreal, man. I gotta shoot some stuff here. Be my guest. This is okay, isn't it? It's totally spur of the moment. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Great. So it's nice to... Oh, my.
my god, look at those guys. They're like perfect. That is a great shot. Yeah, all right, just be respectful though, that's all right. You know, these guys are they're the great, great guys and they're regular customers. No, totally. I just want to get a flavor of the place. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, check out the rollers. Well, yeah, rollers. Well, you know, yeah, people are just a little more casual down here. That's all. Yeah, no, I, I think it's great. You know, there's a there's a street fair in town. Why don't we go check it out? Good idea. Just one second. I think I just found our cover photo. Hey, Steven, just leave Shirley out of this, okay? What's the problem, bro? No problem. Everything's fine. Are we done here? What did I do? Nothing. Uh, let's go check out the street fair. Good idea. Want to come? No, you know what? I'm fine. I'm, I got a lot of work to do. I'm going to do that work. You sure? Yeah, absolutely sure. You know what? I'll meet you for dinner later. Later, Steven. Yeah, all right, man. Sorry about the weirdness. It's fine. So, how'd the rest of Carol's visit go? Well, later that night, after the Stephen fiasco, I met her back at my place. And what happened? I went nuts. Hey, Carl. Yeah, I'm in here. So where's Stephen? I already checked into the Stuckyville Inn. Good. So, what are you in the mood for tonight? You want to try that little Pakistani place or that Persian thing or the fruit? Oh, I thought we were going out to dinner. I know, we were, but I got tired of waiting, so I microwaved a pizza, sorry. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, sure, fine. Get all your work done? See, Carol, you and I both know that work thing was just an excuse. Oh, so we stopped being passive aggressive with each other. Awesome. I'm sorry, Carol, but you know that Steven guy was just really bugging me. You know, I mean, I know he's your friend and all, but God, what a New York snob. He's not a New York snob. He's an ordinary guy. He's from Iowa, for God's sake. He's only been in New York like six months. Yeah, you only lived in New York one month, and look at you. What? What does that mean? You know what it means. Look at you. I mean, look at you with the, the clothes and the camisole and the hair, and I don't even. Well, 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 you've changed. You've changed. Whoa, this whole conversation just took a wrong turn in Albuquerque. It's true. You know it's true. What's true? That I bought like two new outfits? The clothes make the man, Carol. The clothes make the man. And I think you're having some kind of panic attack. Do you hear yourself? You sound like a crazy person. I sound like a, I sound like a crazy person? Listen, listen how you sound. Listen how you sound. You've picked up a New York accent. You've got to be joking. You are joking, aren't you? You've got to be joking. You're joking, aren't you? That's not even a New York accent. You sound like Ted Kennedy. Whatever, I give up. Is this the way it's going to be? What the way it's going to be? Our relationship. Me in New York, you and Stuckyville, hours on the phone in a lonely bedroom. Weekends packed with guilt and anxiety. What are you saying? What are you saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm asking, is this the way it's gonna be? I don't know. And the next night, I was working late, and I heard this kind of strange sound coming from down the hallway. Molly, Molly, don't you ever go home? This is my home. It's also a high school, not a butt sliding emporium. It's just soap and water. Don't worry, the sliding contributes to the cleansing process. Whatever, you just stop screwing around and mop it up. Yeah, whatever. Hey, before I do, you wanna go? What? You wanna ride the serpent? You refer to sliding down this hallway on your ass as riding the serpent? Only when I'm trying to sell the concept. And what makes you think that I would possibly want to do that? The fact that you're sitting alone in a high school principal's office at 10 o'clock at night, bored out of your pretty little skull? So there we were at the GOAT, Jennifer and I, right? For her, it was just a dinner. For me, it was my first date since my accident. Were you nervous? Nah, nah, I was cool. Size your fish, baby. You calling me baby now? No, 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 no. I'm just inquiring as to the status of your seafood entree. Oh, I see. It's very good. Thank you. Good, good. Let me ask you something. 
Why I never hear you talk about your boyfriend? Because I don't have one. I dumped him two months ago. Really? What happened? He turned out to be a loser. Spent all his time making audition tapes for reality shows. Are you serious? Yeah. Survivor came on. He's like, I'm going to be the next Jervis. Bachelorette came on. He's like, they got to have a black bachelor. Everybody knows she ain't going to marry no black dude, but they got to have one anyway for appearances. <laughs> so why you go out with him in the first place? I don't know. I guess because he was 6'4 and looked like Rick Fox. Yeah, I guess that's a good enough reason. <laughs> so how tall are you anyway? What's that? I'm just curious. I mean, I've known you for a while now, but I've got no idea how tall you are. Because every time you see me, I'm sitting down like my man Peter Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, how tall are you? 7'3", baby. 7'3". So stupid. So after dinner, you took her to the pool for a little underwater dance city dance. No, 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 we ain't get to the pool yet. I myself have never experienced a woman in a pool. Irene does not go in for that type of thing. Well, like, we ain't get to the pool yet. One time in the Bahamas, we almost got busy in the shower, but she got some of that Australian three-minute miracle condition in her eye, and that was it. Miracle over. I say bastards. Go on, go on. Will you let me get to the night we went to the pool? Speak, my brother. Phil Stubbs is here. Send him in. Is your ass sore? Because my ass is sore. Uh, <laughs> that is surely the first time that sentence has been uttered in this office. I hope. Seriously, is your ass sore? Because I myself feel like I lost a bullfight. <laughs> you want to see me? Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to say thanks. For what? I don't know if you know this, but my love life has recently imploded. Or maybe it exploded. I think it actually simultaneously imploded and exploded. You know, I have an excellent cream for that. Phil. I'm so, I'm, I cannot stop being obnoxious to you all at once. Anyways, I've really been feeling kind of down lately, and that stupid sliding around the whole thing really cheered me up. Humans cannot be sad while sliding around on a soapy hallway. That is just, that's in the hard wiring. Hmm. Hello, uh, Mr. Emerson. Yes, sir, I... Uh-huh. Well... You know what? I'm gonna skedaddle. I'm gonna go. Yes, sir. A little tender. It wasn't good, was it? Is a phone call in the middle of the day from the superintendent of schools ever good? No. No. He told me I had to fire Phil, that all the teachers were complaining that he wasn't cleaning the school properly. Yes. Oh, well, Mr. Emerson, I... Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I will take care of it. So that night, we were all hanging out at Stucky Bowl. Everyone was laughing, having a good time. Well, except me and Carl, you know, things were still a little bit awkward between us, so I thought I needed to do something drastic, you know, to save the evening, the weekend, possibly the relationship. Hey, Mike? Yes, Skippy? I do believe it's time to appease the aquatic gods. Oh, and you gotta be kidding me, man. No, friend, I am not. I do believe it is time to appease the aquatic gods. No. What the hell are you two inbreds talking about? <laughs> so, back in high school, Mike and I had this tradition. Whenever one of us would utter the words, I believe it's time to appease the aquatic gods, then we had to drop whatever we were doing, no matter what time of day it was, break into the town pool and go swimming. Uh, this was back in high school? Yeah, we were very cool. And by cool, you mean nerds. Exactly. We're all going swimming. It's November. We're all going swimming indoors. Duckyville Community Center. Come on, y'all. Let's hit the pool. Question? I don't have a bathing suit. Yes, you do. Matter of fact, you all have suits. And you know why? Because it just so happens that Stucky Bowl County, the latest in fashionable swimwear. Woo! T-shirts and shorts for everybody. Come on, y'all. Let's hit the pool. Woo!
Sounds like a good time to me. Oh, come on, man. Let me tell you something. Then it comes this point in time where I find myself at the edge of the pool with Jennifer alone. Deep end or shallow end? What difference does it make? I like to create a mental picture. Shallow. Gotcha. You know, you should take that T-shirt off in the pool. Really? And why is that? Because the chlorine will make the ink run. Is that right? Yeah. I'm just thinking of pool safety. I mean, you know, a lot of kids from in this pool. Ink getting to the system, next thing you know, kids be coming down with all kind of ink-related diseases and stuff. So I should take off my shirt for the kids? Yes. I mean, the children are our future. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. That was unexpected. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. No, no, no. No, it ain't that. It's just that I'm... I'm... I'm gonna get going. No, wait. Just... But, but... I know, I know. You were kissing a beautiful woman in a pool and you stopped? I know. That's like a cardinal rule you've broken there. If you're kissing a beautiful woman in a pool, you do not stop. I mean, maybe if someone in the pool is drowning, but even still, you're well within your rights to let someone else deal with that at that particular moment. I know, man. I can't explain it myself, man. Well, you're gonna make things right and ask her out, right? Oh, nah, come on, man. She ain't ready for that, man. She sure seemed ready when she was all kissing on you. Like, she just don't know what she's signing on for, that's all. Oh, the hell she doesn't. You think she thinks you're too lazy to stand up? The she don't know what she's signing on for, man. Or is it that you don't know what you are signing up for? <laughs> Eli, there are people you can talk to about this kind of thing. Yeah, I know. Well, make sure you do it then. And talk to Miss Jenny Fair as well. If she's as cool as you say she is, she'll understand. So I decided to just get it over with, you know? I would just tell Phil, this is not my decision, I hate to do this, but I gotta let you go. Where was I during all this? Oh, you were having fun in the pool or something. Michael! Get in the pool, honey! Michael! Where's the key in the pool, honey? Whoa! Where's she going? Oh, where's she going? Where's the key in the pool? So I downed my third glass of wine, a little liquid courage, as the youngins say, and I find Phil. Hello, Mr. Stubbs. Hello, Principal Hudson. Pool was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> there was no hole sliding in there, right? <laughs> oh, you like the eyebrows, do you? He's just so stupid. Yeah, I actually, I have to stop because I'm getting a cramp in my forehead. Yeah, you hate to say that. Yeah. <laughs> um... I know. This is crazy. I made out with Phil Stubbs. What was I thinking? Do you like him? No. No, it's just one of those crazy things that happens. Oh, my God, the more I think about this. All right, calm down. You know, my life is over. I mean, he's, he's, he's probably down at Stubbs. People right now just announcing this over the PA system. Well, you gotta talk to him about this. No, I need to move. Yeah, I hear Phoenix is nice. Molly, talk to him. Oh, God, why did I do this? Oh. <sighs> Every girl needs a little misbehaving in her life. Yeah, but with Phil Stubbs? There's nothing in the guidance counselor handbook to answer that question. <sighs> so we finished swimming and it was fun, you know? Really fun. It's like being a kid again. And then? And then Carol and I ended up together at the end of the night. And swimming was, was great. I mean, it, it was fun, but there was still this underlying tension between us. That was fun, huh? Mm-hmm. It was fun. Hey. Come here. 
Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why didn't you move to New York with me? And there it was. The question I couldn't answer. The question I didn't answer. And Carol knew I couldn't answer it. And that's when it all went to hell. No answer. Well, what if I asked you why you moved to New York? Well, then I would answer that staying would have meant passing up an opportunity that we both agreed was too big for me to pass up. Yeah. At least I have an answer. Well, I guess it's complicated, Carol. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not complicated at all. Maybe it's really obvious. How's it, how's it really obvious? It all boils down to one simple, undeniable fact. Which is? After all the fuss and all the ballyhoo, I'm not the one. That is not true. Then move to New York with me. Why didn't you move to New York with Carol? See, there it is. There it is again. A million dollar question. Dr. Soper, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Faith Sweeney is on the phone for you. She said it's about Chuck. Um, I'm sorry, Ed. This will just take a minute. Go ahead, go ahead. Faith, Barney Soper here. Okay, listen to me. You have got to take charge of the situation. Now, you're the boss, not Chuck. I want you to take one of the peach-colored pills I gave you, grind it up into a fine powder, and mix it into his food. He'll be sleeping like a, a wet noodle in 20 minutes. Now, when he goes down, put him in the bathroom and lock the door. It's the only way you're going to get him under control right now. All right? Let me know. All right. Uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. No. I... Yeah, well, yeah, the million-dollar question. It's, I'm sorry, I don't mean to private. Is it okay to secretly medicate Chuck like that? I mean, I, I know I... Don't know Chuck, but, uh, I mean, shouldn't he at least be consulted before you, you know, film full of peach-colored pills and knock him out? He's a Great Dane. Oh, he's, oh. So you prescribe medication for a patient's dog? Technically, Chuck is my patient. Well, you know I'm a pet psychologist. You sent me to a dog psychologist? Oh, uh, so what, the guy's a genius. Maybe, if you've got heartworm. Well, if you have heartworm, you go see a veterinarian. This guy really knows how to get inside a dog's head. Which would be great, Mike, except for one fact. I'm not a dog. Oh, come on, a mine's a mine. Look what Dr. Sober did for Willie Butch. Down, down, down. Oh, instantaneous response. <laughs> okay, Mike. That's awesome. Dog. Not a dog, dog. Not a dog, dog. Not a dog. I am not a dog, Mike. We're all dogs, head. And somebody's upset because there's a certain place with a big no dogs allowed sign on it. You know where that place is? The place is right here in your heart. What the hell are you talking about? I don't know. Hi, it's Carol. Leave a message. the offices of Bridge and Tunnel Magazine. If you'd like to leave a message for... Carol Vesey. Begin speaking after the beep. All right, tell me why I didn't go to New York with Carol. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, re I didn't realize. It's okay, we're done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doctor. My pleasure, Faith. Come on, baby. Mama's making pot roast. G'day. Chuck? Uh, actually, Chuck's brother, Randy. So tell me, oh great pet psychologist, why didn't I move to New York with Carol? Why do you think you didn't go? No. No, no. Don't start that doctor stuff with me. I know how you guys do this, all right? I want answers, not questions. Ed, what is Stuckyville to you? That's a question. What is, what is Stuck? I don't know. It's you know, a place I came back to and built a new life for myself. Did you? Did I what? Did you build a whole new life here in Stuckyville? 
or did you rebuild your old life in Stuckyville? Not sure I understand. Well, I mean, think about it. The bowling alley was a place you were happy in when you were 17. Mike and Nancy were your friends when you were 17. Carol was the girl you wanted when you were 17. You know, Stuckyville is a nice, soft cocoon of when you were 17. Yeah, but Carol's a very large part of that. So if she's in New York, then why can't I... Well, yes, yeah, 17-year-old Carol fits into the cocoon. Present-day Carol in Stuckyville even fits in the cocoon. But to follow Carol to New York, well, that doesn't fit in the cocoon. Why not? Because there's only one reason to move to New York with Carol. To marry her. I don't have a problem marrying Carol. I love Carol. I know you love Carol. But you love being 17 even more. Well, that's not true. When things got bad with Carol, what did you try to do to fix them? You got everyone to sneak into the Stuckyville Community Center pool, just like you did when you were 17. Maybe it's time to move forward, Ed. The bank forms arrived for our business loans. I started filling them out, but there's some stuff you should look at. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah. I hope this bank loan works out. Right. It'll be real good for the company. Really would. Man. Hey, Malls. Malls? I think I've earned it. Listen, you busy on Saturday night? Got my own table at the ground round. Right. Oh, okay, 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 okay. We, 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 we have to talk, okay? There, there, there just, there, there can't be a future for us, okay? There, there just, there can't be. What? I was just holding court in the teacher's lounge. Baby, we're couple of the year. That physics teacher dude was so impressed she gave me a pulley. This can't be happening. This just can't be happening. Relax, it isn't. What? I was kidding. So, you haven't told anybody about us? No. Oh, thank God. That's, whoa. <laughs> okay, two things. One, I quit. The sexual tension would destroy us both. And two? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Listen. If you ever want to do it, just call me at Stucky Bowl. Phil. Yeah. You had a classy exit. Okay, but seriously, I really think I'm emotionally capable of having a purely physical relationship. Goodbye, Phil. Yeah. What's on your mind, Bubba? I'm just kind of thinking about everything at once. You ever 2016 do that? Sometimes I imagine eating all the different breakfasts at Denny's all at once. 2017. 2018. I just think that this pet psychologist might be right about me not wanting to grow up, you know? 2019. Yeah, I'm thinking that you, you got a wife and kids and what do I got? I mean, I'm just spending all my time at the same bowling alley we used to hang out when I was 17. 2020, one by two. The very idea of scrapping my life in Stuckyville, moving to New York City is pretty damn scary, 2120. But mostly, I'm thinking about this tiny black line that Carol has in the iris of her left eye. It's really small, you know, it's right down there at 7 o'clock down there. You gotta be up really, really close just to see it. Man.
And I don't think I can live without that. And? And so I'm going to move to New York City and ask Carol Bessie to marry me. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Shot. Yeah. Well, how great would that have been? Man, I'm gonna move to New York City and boom, I'm gonna make Kelly Bessie game over 20 to 20. Oh, oh, 21, 21. Oh, oh, oh. We're gonna be here all night. Hey, you might as well enjoy your last three days of freedom. Yeah, I'm gonna pull the other room for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speed game. Oh, oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs>